Today, we're gonna to be talking about what makes a good starter drone and why. So you started at the DRL simulator. You've gotten tons of stick time in on these micro drones. It's time to move on to a full-size FPV racing drone. Ready to fly kits, also known as RTFs, are incredibly easy to pick up and use. The benefit of an RTF kit is that it doesn't require the knowledge to build a drone yourself. The downside is that you really don't know what goes into building one of these drones. If you crash, the chances are you probably won't know how to repair it. And that often means sending it out, which can be very time consuming and get pretty expensive. A third option to consider, short of building your own drone of course, are bind and fly kits. With a bind and fly kit, the drone itself will come assembled but you're still gonna need a few things before you're in the air. They don't, for example, come with goggles, a radio controller, a radio controller receiver, or batteries. One of the most crucial steps to getting your bind and fly drone in the air involves your RC radio controller and your RC radio controller receiver. When purchasing a transmitter and receiver, the three most important things to look for is that they share the same brand, the same receiver protocol, and that they share the same operating frequency. So this is where it's gonna get just a little more complicated. A receiver needs to be soldered to your drone's main circuit board, otherwise known as the flight controller. After you've soldered your receiver to your flight controller, and you've ensured that those three things are the same between your transmitter and your receiver, then you can start the binding process between the controller and your drone, which we'll talk about in a later episode. If you take the bind and fly route, you're definitely committing to FPV drones long term. 